Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Irad. In the last segment of the last episode of Instar Citizen, we are going to talk about power management. So let's see how this is going to be changing in Star Citizen of Afropolo. On the engineering screen. Oh my. So the first thing that you will see. Wow, it's like the this is crazy. This is like the map that we are seeing when we press F2, but it's it's like a map of the ship. They're probably using the same interface, right? But instead, you get to see all the components, their status, uh, got the life support system there and the cooling system, see uh, how much life they have, I suppose, right? Or their health system. I got to see the fuel as well of the ship. That's so cool. It gives you all the data you need to know about the status of your ship. Is the 3D view of your ship that highlights the location of all what ship is that is that the msr i don't recognize oh it's like a c2 yeah that's a c2 or the ship or an m2 actually and how they are actually connected where the relay positions are what's the status of the relays are it's a constellation you see the, the holograms of each component as you can see they have different colors what they are uh, representing is the overall state of the item so an item that is very damaged or it's on fire or it's not getting in oh it even tells you the alerts that's really well done so you can see the little alerts there and look at that it's like the the top on the on the top right right there you can see the alerts and it's it really tells you here what's going on is whatever is in in red alert or in yellow alert right what Basically, whatever needs your attention. There are 43 alerts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Enough power will be in a critical state. Items are less damaged, are receiving only partial resources, or are going through a misfire. We have moderate colors. And items that are otherwise fine will have the functional or blue colors. Yeah, no colors, right? The biggest change that happened to the engineering UI screen is basically the power management part of it we nice nice so that's what it is right you can allow basically you have the power manager tells the, the, the power plant here which tells you how much power your ship has and then with all of these different boxes there you can allocate them to whatever component you need maybe some components are going to have full power and other components will need less power maybe you're in the middle of the fight right and you are fully suited, fully geared. Maybe you'll put less power to the uh, to the life support system and more power to the guns or the capacitors or the shields. That's also something that might be working, right? If you have a full crew, that's something that I would personally do. Moved away completely from slider control for every individual item. There is indicator now for fuel. This is not relevant for the initial release, but it will be relevant for the future. Next to it, you see the power plant. The power plant segments gives you an idea of how many power segments you can distribute to the ship items. And on the right of each of the power bars, you can generally see the temperature bar. Oh. If it goes into overheating, the item will stop both consuming or producing, and it will be... Oh wow, yeah, we can see this one here is a little bit overheating, right? It's on in the in the red part, so that's the life support system. Completely no problem until it cools down again. So that means that assigning power to your coolers in advance is probably a good idea if you are going into a fight. All the items on your ship generate heat, so this is where you can see the amount of heat that each item has accumulated, and you can see the amount of coolant that you are you are producing and whether or not you are also running a deficit. So what you want to do is put as much power as you can into the coolers until your items do not overheat, but do not assign more resources than necessary because you are running a limited pool of resources. And maybe that's also going to allow a slightly larger ship, let's say for example the Cutlass or Mercury Starliner, to go stealthy because there's going to be an engineer on board who is going to make sure that the heat is as low as possible. Maybe you just have your thrusters on and you're going to be completely undetected maybe um, undetectable until you know it's too late and then oh no we are detected you know come on the engineer put all all power to the shields and the engines you know and then he's going to be doing that here on the interface yeah that's that's definitely going to create some interesting kinds of uh, dynamisms here in different scenarios for multi-crew ships if they want the ships to be as effective as possible. The same applies to the life support generators. So you have to make sure that you produce enough life support resource that the demand is fulfilled in your ship. If your demand isn't fulfilled, it will cause some failures. 
You also saw notifications panel. Here the main warnings about the state of the ship will be displayed. If an item is damaged, doesn't get enough power. <laughs> this ship has a lot of damage firing, stuff. It will create a warning. You will be able to see it as a notification. Uh, take a look at it, go to the item, or just remove it. That's really good. I that is really good game design here that they've got those notification systems so that we know where to go instead of just that's what i was afraid of with this kind of gameplay is having to figure out where to go see you know which thing is damaged which thing is not here you got this notification system that tells you exactly where to go which component is damaged you go there you do your thing as an engineer you fix the ship and that's it that's good right it's nice to have complicated game designs but at the same time it needs to be simple enough so that it's enjoyable for players to do so you have an option that allows you to basically lock the controls so that you or the pilot which has access to the mfd which shares some of the power management functionality do not conflict with your controls so by locking this you are able to override the mfd settings to only have it being authoritative from the engineering station yeah, that's also good. Imagine you're in the middle of the fight, right? The pilot is also tweaking things. <laughs> you're like, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix the ship, you know? So it's good that they also have this uh, override system. If you are able to take the power assignment you have at a given time and save it locally on your computer, meaning that when you fly again with the ship, or even if it's not your ship, but somebody else's ship, uh, you can quickly apply your presets. This is very useful in the middle of combat. And you can quickly switch to a combat preset where you will give, for example, more power to seals, weapons, and thrusters. Or at the same time, uh, you may want to have some nap mode preset where, you know, you, you reduce the power to everything and just put it on the bare minimum so there's no degradation or misfires related to power use. So you can set a preset on your ship and then jump on somebody else's ship and load it up? Indeed. Uh, your presets are stored locally, so as long as you have access to the screen and you're using the same ship, you can apply a preset. Obviously, if the components have changed or, you know, the ship So it's just for your own ship, right? You cannot do that to, to, others, to someone else's you ship. Need to uh, but it gives you a quick baseline on how your power is assigned. Okay, nice. We hope that with these changes, oh, yeah, players will have more valuable opportunities to experience the game. We'll encounter more situations where it feels relevant and enjoyable to have multi-crew gameplay in the ships, so that you do not think it's just about filling in the battle positions. Like yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. It's good to they, they they have gameplay for people who are not necessarily interested in in fighting or people who are just not good at flying ships, like me, for example. I'm more of an FPS type of guy, but there's not always going to be FPS combat, right? What, what if I'm in a ship? You know, there there's no boarding, no nothing. You know, I'm just in, in the multi crime. You know, turret, my turret is dead, right? What am I gonna do? Well, maybe a little bit of engineering. That makes sense. So I, I totally understand. I totally understand that. Yeah, that that's, like that's the, the turrets and the pilot seats. But it's more involved gameplay to actually manage your ships and uh, try to fix the uh, ongoing situation that occur within them. And we also hope that this makes larger vehicles, which have more interior space, both more troublesome but also more enjoyable to play with. Mm. We are still it's working. definitely going to make our adventures in the game more of a journey than they have ever been. Mm. ...hard to get it done for all of you. There are ships that already have the functionality, there are still ships that we are working on. But yeah, not all ships are gold standards, something that we've been talking a, a lot about in uh, Bar Citizen Taipei, right? that they are going to have to make sure that ships eventually get to gold standards so that they can support these kind of so gameplay. Overall, we are super excited to finally get it into the PU. So the Arena Command Experiment Mode was already fun to observe what you can do uh, with the entire system. And now with having the feedback from that, adjusting the gameplay a little from the feedback that we received from you. I need to try Arena Commander. I am really looking forward to, to see what you all will be doing with it. All right. So what have we learned this week? Yes, what have we learned, Jared? Well, we learned that there's a sweet new interface for dedicated engineering terminals aboard spacecraft. It looks good. They've actually done a, a great job with that, yes. That the first implementation of armor and damage penetration means that the ways that you kill and keep your spaceships alive will fundamentally change. Yes. And that when this arrives in the PU, life aboard spaceships will never be the same again. Now, that's it for this season of Inside Star Citizen. Oh, it feels like we've had a lot of this, of Inside Star Citizen this season. This is probably the biggest season of Inside Star Citizen we've had, right? Because they've they been trying to roll out all the way until 4.0. I think that's what they were going to be doing, right? They're, after season con is up, they're like, we're going to have Inside Star Citizen all the way until 4.0, and 4.0 will come out at the end of December. We'll see. Well, everybody here turns their focus towards the upcoming CitizenCon, 
where we'll be showcasing the future of Star Citizen beyond Alpha 4.0. Nice, I told you. That was in my predictions last year for this year's season con. Not about Pyro. What's coming up next? Now, I'm telling you guys, we're going to be seeing Nyx. And I hope we're going to see uh, Terra as well. A little bit of a preview of Terra. Maybe concept arts, new concept arts, but something about Terra. They've got to show us Terra. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching once again, guys. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you have not. And I'll see you guys in the next one.